Welcome to episode 2 of my Guitar Music Theory series. If you haven't checked out my previous episodes in this series, I'd recommend checking out the Music Theory playlist. I've structured these lessons in such a way that each episode incrementally builds from the previous ones, so starting from the beginning, if you're new to the guitar theory, in general is definitely recommended. Let's continue where we left off last time and begin to apply what we learned about the musical alphabet to our instrument, applying it to the neck, frets, and strings of the guitar. We can identify the individual strings in a few different ways, the most common few being by number, as well as referring to those strings by using terms like top, bottom, low, high, etc. Now I have to admit I very often found myself getting confused when talking to other musicians as the naming convention seemed, at least to me, ambiguous at best and at worst counterintuitive. It's only practical to number a set of things in order as long as everybody agrees on where you start. And using terms like high and low in this context of musical instruments can be confusing unless you know if you're referring to the relative spatial positioning of the things or musical pitch. When using the numbering system, the first string is the thinnest string. I think of it like the number value relates to how thick or big the string is, one being the smallest or the thinnest, and six being the biggest or the thickest. Now, alternatively, even though the sixth string is technically the highest or the top, if we were to use these terms in the context of their position relative to the sort of vertical stack of strings or like relative to the floor, but that's not what these terms are referring to. Instead, they're referring to pitch. The low string, the bottom string, is the thickest string and vice versa. However you want to remember this for yourself is fine, although let me say the following two words and I bet you won't be able to not remember this forever. Thick, bottom. The thickest or biggest string is the bottom string and has the biggest number. If all you remember is this, then you should be able to easily extrapolate what the other strings are. In summary, here are the strings on the guitar. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. This is the top string. This is the bottom string. Now on to the frets and the fretboard which is going to build on what we just learned, but is definitely a little bit more straightforward. The fretboard is the actual piece of wood or other material that you see when you're looking at the neck of the guitar from the front. It's the thing that's split up into sections with all these little lines and dots. Those lines are little strips of metal called fret wire and are what's responsible for producing the intended note when you press the string down onto the fretboard and then pluck the string. The spaces on the fretboard between the fret wire are commonly referred to as frets, and we'll use a familiar numbering system to identify which fret we're talking about. The first space here being the first, this being the second, and so on. In some contexts, when people use the term fret, they're referring specifically to the metal bits on the fretboard, the fret wire. You might get your frets polished or dressed as part of a guitar tune-up, for example, and in this case, the term fret is referring to the actual literal fret wire itself. But for pretty much all instances in the future, assume that I'm talking about the spaces between the metal wire when I use the term fret. Another physical element of the neck worth mentioning here is this, called the nut. Commonly made of bone or some other synthetic material, the nut is there to keep the string properly spaced, both vertically from the fretboard itself, but also from the other strings. Lots of guitars have different configurations when it comes to their necks and fretboards, but for the most part they tend to be almost entirely visual. The most common configurations that you're likely to see are either 22 or 24 frets with simple inlay dots on the fretboard along with corresponding markers or dots on the side. Now these dots are here to provide visual context as to where you are on the neck, with the first dot usually being on the third fret, and then there's one dot on each of the odd numbered frets until the ninth, where after that there is a two fret gap before the twelfth fret indicated by two dots. As mentioned in the last video, there's 12 notes, so at this point the 12th fret is the halfway point of the neck. As such, we can see that there's an identical pattern of dots continuing starting from the 12th fret. That means that we can rest easy knowing that we only need to learn to navigate the first half of the fretboard, and what we learn there translates exactly one for one with the second half. Anything you play down here, you can play up here. So, now that we know the musical alphabet, how to uniquely identify each string is well as how to identify where on each string we want to play, the real fun can begin. We now have the foundation to start speaking the language of the guitar. Let's start by combining all three. To begin, we can think about the neck of the guitar as a graph, like, you know, a graph that you would use in math class. You know, those grids with the x-axis and the y-axis. 
We can think about the fret number as the X position and the string number as the Y position. If I were to say, put your finger on the sixth fret of the first string, I would be referring to this position here. This is the third fret on the fourth string. This is the 13th fret on the second string, and hopefully by now you get the picture. You now know where to play the correct note, but you might not yet know what note that is. Let's say hello again to our friends, the letters of the musical alphabet that we learned about last time. When it comes to the letters and the patterns and sharps and flats and all that stuff that we learned last time, don't worry if you don't have them all perfectly memorized in second nature yet. It's totally fine and entirely expected. The whole point here is that the more that we start to build in other things on top of the little foundation that we've already built, the more solid that foundation is going to get. The best place to start applying the musical alphabet to the neck is with the open strings and their corresponding notes. Assuming your guitar is in tune, something I don't really plan on getting into as there's a million of these videos out there already, the open bottom string note should be an E. Then moving along up the strings in order, the next string is an A, the next is a D, then a G, then a B, and then ending with the first string is another E. So what we have with the open strings are E, A, D, G, B, and E. There's probably a million mnemonics out there for you to remember. I'll probably look some up and include them in a bit, but I do have to share the one that ever since I was a kid I've used. I'm pretty sure I came up with this myself because it makes no sense, but again, after nearly 20 years, I haven't forgotten. E, A, D, G, B, E, or Eat a dog, goodbye everyone. If you want to go the mnemonic route, I'll toss a few up on screen here and you can choose which one you think best suits you, or maybe even come up with your own, whatever works. All that you really have to know at this point is that the order of the notes on the strings is, for the most part, arbitrary. This is the most common tuning and the one that is sort of the assumed default for every guitar, but there's also a million different ways to tune your guitar and they're all technically equally valid. The important part to remember is that as soon as you change the tuning of your guitar, you're very likely going to have to relearn a lot of the things that you might have already learned already with the standard tuning. Any scales or chords or intervals that moves between the strings might be entirely different with a different tuning, so caveat emptor. Alright, so I think that that's enough for this episode. Let's do a quick wrap up and see how much you've retained so far. This time I'm not going to wait so long between giving you the answer, so as soon as I ask the question, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that and take as long as you need to figure it out. Which string is the bottom string? If you point it to this string, you're correct. If not, just remember, thick bottom. Which string is the second string? If you point it to this string, you are correct. Remember, the skinniest string, number one, is the first string, so that naturally means that the next string would be the second string, here. Which of these strings is the D string? If you were pointing to this string right here, the fourth string, you're correct. Which of these strings is the high E? If you said this string, you were correct. Where is the second fret on the third string? It's right here. How about the ninth fret on the first string? That would be right here. Where is the third fret on the D string? It would be right here. Where's the sixth fret on the B string? It would be right here. And finally, where is the 14th fret on the low E? That would be right here. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions about this or any of the other topics I've talked about before, do leave me a message in the comments and I'll get back to as many as I can and look forward to building more on all of this foundation in the next episode. See you then.